So this is a map of where I live. And as you can probably tell, I didn't get this from Google Maps. It was done by my great-grandfather 100 years ago. My great-grandfather, who also was called Thomas, was a farmer. And this wasn't something unusual to my family, because if you guys were to go back 100 years, you'd probably find that some of your relatives were involved in farming. And this wasn't something that was unusual to Ireland either, because 100 years ago, 1915, the world's population was at 2 billion people. And 90% of the world's population was involved in agriculture, either growing food for themselves or for other people. And if you would have gone into Dublin city centre 100 years ago, you probably would have seen something like this. There would have been farmers markets going on every day, people growing their own food during the week, selling it at the weekends, everyone working in the interdependently, growing their own food, selling it to each other. But nowadays, if you were to go into Dublin city centre, you'd be more likely to find something like this, or this, or maybe even this. Our food has changed a lot in the past 100 years. And the question is, why? Well, in 2015, the world's population is almost at 8 billion people. So since 1915, the world's population has quadrupled. But the amount of people employed in agriculture now is at 2%. So the question is, why did this happen? And is it having any effects in the world we live in today? So when the world's population began to increase, the, current, the situation would have been you would have had the city and the farm right next to the city. And the farmers would grow the food, sell it to the people who are living there. But as the need for more housing increased, what was previously agricultural land had to be changed into residential land. So gradually, as this process repeated, the farm moved further and further away from the people they were giving the food to. And so over time, this had an effect on things. There was more people hungry. We needed to get more food. So we resorted to conventional farming. We started using chemicals. So we used things like herbicides and pesticides to increase crop yields, to feed more people. But into the future, because by 2050, the world's population is going to be at 10 billion people. And this is going to need a requirement for us to increase food production by about 70% this model of farming is not going to be sustainable. We're not going to be able to continuously bombard plants with chemicals and not think that that's going to have an effect on our own health. So the question is, with this global impending problem happening very soon, and it's happening right at this moment, what are the answers that we're going to come up with to come up with solutions? So for us, the solution is urban farming. So for those of you that don't know, urban farming is the growing of food, animals, and educating people all within the city. One of the great benefits of urban farming is that you don't need to get extra agricultural land. You can just utilize the space that you already have. So this is our greenhouse. And two or three months ago, this would have been a, a very different place. There would have been the odd pot of soil or a junior search uh, science experiment around the place, but nothing more than that. And now we've completely changed it into our own farm where we're producing food for restaurants, farmers markets, and parents of uh, boys who are in the school as well. So what are we growing in the farm? Well, one of the main things that we're growing is a thing called microgreens, so they can be seen here. And there's a photo of some sunflower seeds uh, on the PowerPoint. What are microgreens? Well, microgreens are these small plants that can be grown in trays. They only grow to about 10 centimeters in height. It only takes 10 to 14 days for them to grow. And after that 10 to 14 days, they can be harvested, given to restaurants, um, and used as garnish on dishes. So at the moment, we're selling them to places like the Box Tea House. Uh, here you can see one of the chefs holding up a tray of our peas. Um, on the other side of the farm, we're growing uh, more plants. In this case, there's broad beans. Yeah, there's broad beans um, in an aquaponics system. So, what does aquaponics mean? Aquaponics is basically growing plants uh, utilizing a water cycle. So, it's a, ours is a very simple system. On top, you have plants. The plants are growing on a bed of rocks which has nitrates, which is a form of bacteria, on top. Then, the bottom, we have rainbow trout. 
Um, and how the cycle works is basically what the fish excrete can be eaten by the plants, and the plants eat it, what the plants excrete can be taken up by the fish. So you create this virtuous cycle going on and we're able to grow the plants. So this is what we're growing on our farm. And we're selling these to the Boxy House, the Temple Bar, Delhi 147, very close to the school, Chapter 1 restaurant as well. And you may think this is, we're sort of crazy, you know, we're just one school, we're not really making a difference. What, is anybody else doing this? Well, urban farming is not only happening here. Here's a photo of a small urban farm project in Amsterdam where a community came together and decided they wanted to grow their own food. They cordoned off a space in the city and started growing th things in these wooden crates. Um, it's not just in Amsterdam though. This company is called Food Peddlers. They're based in Canada. They grow microgreens just like us in four storage containers. And once they create their produce, they then sell it to farmers markets and restaurants and they bring all the produce in trailers and they cycle it around Vancouver. Here you have the biggest rooftop farm in the world. It's called the Brooklyn Grange Rooftop Project. And these guys outside of New York are growing about 25,000 kilos worth of organic fruit and vegetables every single year and supplying it to the community of New York. Closer to home, only an hour away from the school down in Wicklow, you have the Happy Pear Farm. These are two brothers, part of a three brother partnership. They're also growing microgreens in storage containers and they're selling them to over 120 super value stores across the country. So clearly, this isn't just something unique to us. It's a global movement towards creating our own food. And it's not only helping businesses like these, but as you can see here, this is the first, this is the first tray of micro broccoli I grew at home. It took about 10 to 14 days. I harvested it and put it on this, which is a bowl of soup, um, which my mom made. Uh, it tasted really nice. So it's not something just for businesses. It's something that can be done at home. It's very easily done, and it doesn't require that much prior knowledge in agriculture. So this is a global movement, a global movement which is posed to we can regain some of the intimacy that we had with our food that our great, great grandparents had 100 years ago because we're able to grow it ourselves and it's not just traveling thousands of miles before it gets to our plate. We can use the food that we grow to help support our communities, not only helping the economy, but uh, helping each other by sharing the food that we create. And we think here in the urban farm at school that we think if we can change our own world and our own communities, we have the possibility to be able to change the world around us and create some much needed answers towards a truly global problem. Thank you.